Good afternoon. On today's Angry Bulletin, another Long March 6A rocket has exploded in Earth orbit broken up, whatever you want to call it, but it created hundreds of pieces of space debris in the process. And this seems to be a recurring trend with the Long March 6A, and the Chinese Space Agency continues to remain remarkably unconcerned, even cavalier, about its rocket's tendency to do these sorts of things. And as the population of space debris continues to increase in low Earth orbit, bit in elsewhere, the European Space Agency predicts that it's just a matter of time before we experience a cataclysmic chain reaction of collisions that could destroy our entire commercial space industry and the world economy along with it. All of this and more coming at you on the Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon and welcome to The Angry Astronaut. In what is becoming a very common trend, a Long March 6A rocket broke apart, in my opinion more like exploded, given how many fragments of space debris were ultimately created in low Earth orbit, and this is the second time at least that a Long March 6A has exploded under these circumstances. That is to say, the second time this year. The rocket was supposed to deliver 18 G60 satellites as part of the Thousand Sails constellation, which will eventually include 1,296 satellites, definitely a mega constellation, not enough really to rival Starlink, but it's supposed to compete with it in the long run. But of course, the difference is Starlink never really has this kind of side effect every time it deploys its satellites, certainly not this bad. And again, it seems to be a repeating trend with the Long March 6A. And as usual, China is not commenting about this at all and does not seem to be terribly concerned about it either. A statement from the U.S. Department of Defense confirmed the breakup a few days ago, quote, U.S. Spacecom has observed no immediate threats and continues to conduct routine conjunction assessments to support the safety and sustainability of the space domain. However, the Leo Labs company, which makes a pretty good living tracking all of this stuff, well, they have now tracked over 700 debris fragments and potentially more than 900 that are bigger than 10 centimeters, adding considerably to the population of dangerous space debris that exists in low Earth orbit. And as this problem continues to worsen, the danger of what is called the Kessler syndrome continues to increase. And I know that some of you are probably getting sick of hearing about the Kessler syndrome, and I'm getting sick of reporting on it. I really wish that we would have a little bit more responsibility when it comes to space sustainability, but we just don't, or at least some nations don't really exercise a whole lot of responsibility when it comes to that. So the rocket broke apart at approximately 810 kilometers above Earth's surface, and according to an organization called Slingshot, which also tracks space debris and other objects in orbit, they call this debris, quote, a significant hazard to low Earth orbit constellations below 800 kilometers in altitude. This would, of course, include the International Space Station, which currently orbits at an altitude of 480 eight kilometers. According to Slingshot, their Horus sensor systems, which provide satellite tracking in low Earth orbit, detected a series of bright, unexpected objects moving along the same orbital path as the rocket body and the G-60 satellites that it deployed. Of course, China didn't announce anything about the event and certainly did not warn anyone that their launch might present some sort of danger to other satellites in a similar orbit. And because the Chinese satellites were delivered into orbit around Earth's poles rather than an equatorial orbit, they will pack a real punch with other objects not in polar orbit, like two cars colliding at an intersection, according to John Cressidis, Moog Professor of 
Innovation within the University of Buffalo School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Everything in low Earth orbit travels at 17,500 miles an hour. The worst case scenario, at least according to Professor Cressidis, is when any part of the debris field collides with something that is moving around the equator. That's a T-bone intersection case. Imagine two cars going at 17,000 miles an hour and crashing at a T-bone intersection. Obviously, that's bad. Overall, any object in its path will be in a bad situation. And this is just the latest in a series of events that is making the space debris environment in low Earth orbit a very, very dangerous place to be indeed. The European Space Agency, which pays a lot more attention to this crisis than just about anybody else and is actively spending money to try to do something about space debris mitigation, came out with a report this year just a few days ago actually regarding the current situation with space debris and just how bad things are getting you can see from the following charts just how much the number of objects in low earth orbit are increasing as you can see the number of objects is increasing exponentially and it's just getting worse and according to the report earth's orbital environment is a finite resource more satellites were launched in 2000 2023 than in any year before, by far actually. The number and scale of commercial satellite constellations in certain low Earth orbits continues to increase, and not enough satellites leave these heavily congested orbits at the end of their lives. Satellites that remain in their operational orbit at the end of their mission are at risk of fragmenting into dangerous clouds of debris that linger in orbit for many years. Active satellites must perform form an increasing number of collision avoidance maneuvers to dodge out of the way of other satellites and fragments of space debris. The adoption of space debris mitigation measures is slowly improving, but not nearly enough to stop the increase in the amount of space debris. And without further change, the collective behavior of spacefaring entities, private companies, and national agencies is unsustainable in the long term. Not that it's going to be probably unsustainable or that it's going to encounter some challenges or difficulties. It is simply unsustainable. And we can see from this chart as to how many cataclysmic collisions are likely to take place in low Earth orbit, even if we don't launch anything else. And that number is going to increase exponentially as well if the current trend of launching objects into orbit continues continues, especially if we continue to have events as happened a few days ago with the Chinese Long March 6A. So what can we do about all this? Well, not a lot, at least at the moment, given the fact that we don't have any universal space debris mitigation treaties in place. Space junk belonging to any given nation, whether it be China, Russia, Europe, the United States, or whatever, is their property and cannot be touched by anybody else. So even if you have a perfectly viable technology to remove lots of space junk, you can't can't legally do it if that junk belongs to somebody else. We need treaties put into place that allow space mitigation companies and debris removal companies, and there are more and more of those coming out all the time who are carrying out some very impressive demonstrations of their technology, but they can't use that technology until they have the legal right to go after anybody's space junk, regardless of who owns it. And until we get the cooperation of nations like China or Russia, the circumstances in orbit are just going to continue to get worse until eventually, and I think this is unavoidable, we are going to be unable to use low Earth orbit at all. And it's very possible that we won't be able to pierce low Earth orbit either to carry out interplanetary missions, missions to the moon, or anything else for at least half a century and possibly longer. And the impact that that would have on the economy alone, let alone our ability to explore the cosmos, would be tragic indeed. 
Thank you very much for watching. I would like to thank the following incredible supporters, James Sanger, Andre Lucas, Paul Wrightson, Carlton Little, and also new Patreon members Wrath908, Martin, Dean Sherman, Boydy, and Nathaniel Stapp. Thank you so much for your help in getting me across the Atlantic to cover the new SpaceX NASA Crew-9 mission that's going to be coming up in September. Really appreciate it. Certainly couldn't do any of this without your help. And if you'd like to join these folks, all the details are in the description. And I just released another Patreon exclusive video. This one about Starship and what sort of environmental impact it really has on the planet, both positive and negative. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, stay angry about space.